It's finally time to discuss the winners and the losers of the new Forbidden and Limited list. The new ban list dropped a few days ago and it might be a shakeup to the format. Even though 29 cards have been impacted on this list, whether they're banned, limited, or now unlimited, there's still a debate on what are the actual best decks. And we're here to talk about that and see who actually benefited the most Hint, you bell. And maybe if some decks actually got hit, like Snake Eye. And if you enjoy this type of content, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share this one with a friend. See if they agree. Comment down below when you're finished, and don't skip to the end, because I'm going to do some editing tricks to prevent you from doing that. Starting off, first of all, with Branded Despia. So... Branded obviously got hit finally, you know, Branded Expulsion was the, the only Branded card on the list for a long time. And apparently after three years, Konami has decided it's time to start impacting the deck consistently. Even though I think people who played Branded so far are the people who really wanted to, to have a challenge with it. It wasn't the best deck ever in my opinion so it was sort of like out of passion i think right now branded i'm gonna leave it like solidly at tier two probably like a high tier two right so it's not the forefront of the meta it's not the best deck i think it wasn't as severely impacted maybe i'm kind of underselling it maybe it is one and a half because there is still like the consistency hit to branded fusion doesn't actually change much i think that in terms of what kind of competition it has in the meta that's going to be left to see mainly spoiler you bell is not super easy to play against with this deck they can kill you really quickly even though they lost apollosa and a lot of decks lost apollosa which was a buff to branded and also grass we'll talk about that when i do the deck profiles it's still going to be hard to play into those decks so i think one and a half is pretty solid Labyrinth didn't really get any significant buff. They actually got Prosperity Limited, which was a Labyrinth card to some extent, and Skill Drain was also limited. Some players played it with Fiendsmith. That's not really impacted. I think a tier two is solid for Labyrinth. I think there's not much improvement in terms of that deck at the moment, so I'm going to keep it a tier two. Um, Voiceless Voice, and I also want to include Melodious here because th this deck these decks actually got a buff first of all like when room at the top is cleared you have some decks rising up again and these two decks actually got eva right now i don't know how people are going to be utilizing that but the fact that eva is playable and will be beneficial in these decks maybe i can see them doing something M melodious unfortunately i think as a deck the fact that they did lose Apo, like as an engine and as a deck really hurts, like losing Apollosa. I think Voiceless still kind of remains the same here. I think Rage of the Abyss might change that just because of Mulchami Fuaris that is really solid to play against. I, I think it's probably here, but Melodious unfortunately was phased out really quickly. Um, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Like people are going to incorporate things like Power Sink Stone to replace Skill Drain. I don't know. Memento, I don't know if this is scary. It's probably like here, surprisingly. I think I think this is going to be, this might end up being a scary deck. Because this really relies on hand traps, non-engine, and just having like the big negate. It's not impacted by Apo at all. Um, nothing that I can really think of in terms of the, the deck's consistency and playstyle, honestly, that was impacted. So it's probably like a good high tier two. And then we have the um, Evaporation Dragon Bestial Control deck. I mean, honestly, it is rogue, but I think I kind of want to see it perform well, right? Uh, another deck that probably played Prosperity in terms of uh, Memento. And Prosperity to one is, you know, kind of impactful. I will say that maybe the Bestial Control deck could benefit from Red Rose Dragon coming back. I think like there are plays there, but we'll, we'll have to see. Now... I think the first, like, absolutely clear tier one deck is going to be Bell Fiendsmith. The boards that this deck puts out are really, really solid, in my opinion. You got boards that include Fiendsmith Desiree, sometimes Verudras, Phantom of Bell, which is just an absurd card, Nightmare Griffin sometimes. Now, the loss to Apollosa is 
significant in this deck, but opening of the spirit gates is not really the issue. Like this was a definition by the book slap on the wrist and nothing more. So it will still continue living on. This is going to be the best deck in my opinion. At least it looks like until people figure out something else that could be done. But overall, like this is the scariest deck to play against. It's um, It's got like options like Nightmare Griffin. It's got insane back row. You still have to deal with the Nightmare Pain every time. They have so like consistent follow-up for turn three. This deck is really scary. I don't think it's a question in anyone's mind whether this deck is going to be successful because this was the deck that is like left standing at this point. Um, Kashtira, I'm honestly going to put it like high rogue. Prosperity, like we saw what happened when the semi-limited unicorn, the deck became unplayable. Now with Prosperity Limited, I don't see it. Um, gimmick Puppet, seriously, just don't bother. Um, and then Whitewoods, we got two variants. I think the, um, I think honestly, like the toy variant kind of relied more on Calamity, which is banned. Hot Bread, Dragon King, Archfiend, Calamity is banned now. But the runic version, I think, is going to see play, and I think it's going to be very good. I think the deck is really solid. We saw that. And, yeah, I'm excited for this. This is a good... I mean, runic is very controversial. Many people don't actually like the engine. But the fact that even though this deck was a skill train deck, this deck still has a lot of really good tools going second against you, Bell. And if this is what you're considering is a good deck, if, you're, if you can fight the best deck and succeed, then I think that's a W. I think that's a real W. Um, Dragon Link, I'm sorry, Trishula. I saw the combos. Um, I think now with like Savage Gone, Apo wasn't really played, to be honest. Sang and Summoning, maybe, I don't know, maybe. Like maybe I can see it. Because I did see Trishula's video with, I'm going to give him some credit. Um, go check out his channel. But I think, I think it might be like bottom, bottom tier two. No, honestly, no. No, Dragon Link. Just like people don't play. Like two of the bosses of this deck, Savage and Baron, are gone. Not worth it. Rescue Ace. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, it could see experimentation. I think it will see experimentation. The fact is that Airlifter is still one. Makes it really hard. Prosperity was also played in this deck. Also a pretty, like every time I, I mention a hit, it goes down. It's probably here because it is still like the Sinful Spoils engine is still solid. So... I would say it's probably around here. I think it will see competition and experimentation, for sure. I think it will. Let's start talking about Snake Eyes. Let's start talking about Snake Eyes. Um, we have two variants here. I think this is important to talk about. I think it is going to look something like, like this, to be honest. I think it's going to look something like this. I'm not really sure about the matchup between Snake Eyes and Whitewoods, right? There's good reason to believe like Whitewoods can really pick up out that board with Runics and it's a really good control deck. The fact is that people don't understand that people think that it does nothing and like once October comes with Rage of the Abyss, everything is going to, uh, which I agree by the way, like Rage of the Abyss is going to bring back the consistency for this deck. However, right now the deck is really rough. Like the deck is so rough, like into hand traps the boards aren't good enough like the grind game's not there at all with like one ash one poplar like the hits people were not happy the hits were solid and now the deck is like less consistent and they lost beatrice and lacrima and apollosa like these are essentially three snake eye hits the fire king stuff i don't really believe it yet i think it's going to be on the same tier because they're people are going to mix it up and it's still solid even like you know what do you even do here like in snake eye you have you know, the Snake Eye stuff, but in Fire King, until Olkanix comes out. Like, if Olkanix was legal now, Fire King Consort Olkanix, I think is her name. If Olkanix was the thing, it'll probably be here, if we're being honest. But since it's not, I think it's going to be, like, around here. Tenpai. I think Tenpai is also going to be, like, here. I, I want to give it more credit than it probably deserves. Sang and Summoning and Prosperity are major hits. Like, don't be wrong. These are significant hits to Tenpai. Like, the deck was not consistent before. It did not have enough starter. The thing it has going for it is that, first of all, it draws one more card. Because it goes second all the time. So they always start with six. Or the potential to see six. They have Shifter legal. And they're good with, like, Mulchami to draw more cards. So that's a consistency card. 
they have a new Malchormy coming out for Aorus in Rage of the Abyss, which is more consistency. So it's gonna, it's probably gonna spike back again. And the cards themselves are kind of crazy, but you're gonna be able to interact with it more often. So you know, it's balanced. I think the list actually might have done like a solid thing over there. We'll see. Um, I think Fire King is gonna drop here, <laughs> to be honest. Um, Pearly, Pearly, Pearly Fiendsmith maybe solid. The deck lost prosperity, so it goes down a bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really see it. Maybe it could be annoying here. Maybe like a heavy Fiendsmith engine with like three Luries. Yeah, could work probably. Chimera. I'm gonna put it here like very cautiously in rage of the abyss like or, or you know what there is um the the doom fusion the level six zombie fiend fusion it's gonna be huge for this deck nobody knows when it's gonna come out it's probably gonna come out around the time as olkanex does it was an ocg like exclusive over there outside of a set so there is the possibility here where chimera is like extremely solid the the thing is that Chimera did also lose Lacrima, but it still should be fine. I mean, I believe in in Chimera. And now with Branded Fusion Limited, you don't have to decide whether you want to play the Branded Engine in Chimera. You just don't. You just don't play it at one. Runic Stun, is there like a reason to think that Runic Stun is not going to be a really good deck, this format? Yeah. Plants did not get hit, right? Honestly, did not get hit. Maybe some builds with grass. Just not good, I think. It's just not good at all. Tier Elements Horus is probably going to be like Tier Elements Fiendsmith and Tier Horus probably going to be here. Now that grass is legal, maybe there's like a world where, you know, this deck can make Colossus. I think it's going to be a solid like high tier two. People are going to steal some wins with it. Shout out to, to Gary, my boy. Um, Fluendries don't bother without prosperity don't bother um salad is like hella rogue didn't really get a buff out of this list to be honest right there's no drytron here by the way which probably should be but i i can tell you it's rogue centurion is rogue no calamity unfortunately magical musket i might like cautiously put it here i think we'll have to see because Link into the Vrains is such a good card. And honestly, the deck is very annoying. Losing Lacrima means that the deck needs like different lines that are not as good. But in addition to that, the deck is still very annoying and solid. This maybe here. Sprite is completely like besides Sprite Elf, obviously, is pretty solid. None of the forbidden cards have been played in sprite like sprite doesn't need apo it doesn't need beatrice it doesn't like people play fiends with it, with it recently but it doesn't need lacrima specifically it didn't really like it maybe it did play prosperity but i'm sure like it's not as important you have the frog engine with the ice barrier continuous spell and the new ice barrier girl that can make a toad with one card a totally awesome this deck could be a sleeper if i'm being honest it could be a sleeper and dark world is gonna be like always like rogue and then i think like ritual beast even though shifter is still legal and there were like no actual hits here like skill drain got hit apollosa got hit which was a ritual beast card and most importantly prosperity was hit i, I think it's like it's gonna be rough because the deck doesn't have a lot of starters unfortunately this is going to be my list. I think that maybe like in terms of decks that, that aren't here because I just, I made the template before the, the ban list, but it didn't really change much, to be honest. Like Drytron is not here. It's going to be on the screen, but Drytron is probably going to be in still in Rogue. The prop like Eva doesn't solve the, the problems of the deck, I think. And in reality, there's also the concept of magic specters which could be toxic with kieran but it's not going to be enough to to make it competitively viable there's also light sworn like a big light sworn grass pile that you have to understand like having grass doesn't really change the fact that the deck doesn't really have any good end board pieces like what do you do now with no apo no baron like these are the cards that you want to summon in that deck but you're not going to have a way to do that and also beatrice beatrice is a hit I mean, grass if you draw it awesome if you you don't want to go left arm offering for it so 
these are the decks um, that are not here. Seemingly, you bell alone at the top. I do believe that it's a bit far ahead than all the other decks, but I do have, like, I do really want to see Whitewoods and Sprite kind of creeping up and trying to, you know, do something to shake up the meta. I think it's going to be really interesting. Let me know in the comments, of course, what do you guys think about this list? What is true? What is incorrect in your opinion? Make sure to like this video, subscribe. Please share this with a friend. It really helps. It really helps. Just click the share button, copy the link, send it to your group chat and Discord and say like, hey, look at this idiot's takes. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.